Welcome to my lecture online. Here's the second part of a two-part problem where we're trying to simulate what a, a, an application circuit such as an airbag switch in a car will look like. So in the previous video we already determined the equation for the voltage as a function of time and then the first derivative of the voltage with respect to time because what we're trying to do here is realize that it was an underdamped system the voltage of the resistor will reach some maximum value and then begin to oscillate because of the underdamping condition but to, in order to find that first maximum we take the derivative and set it equal to zero so that's what we did here we set the derivative equal to zero and what do we do solve for t now you may look at this and go, how in the world do we solve for t? Because we have a cosine, we have a sine, we have an e to the minus 5t. But notice we can actually simplify that with a neat mathematical trick. What if we divide both sides of the equation by the following? We're going to divide it by the cosine of 21.794t multiply times e to the minus 5t because essentially we know that this is simply an exponential decay so that has nothing to do with finding that first maximum and if we divide both sides of the equation by the cosine notice that the cosine will drop out and the sine divided by cosine becomes a tangent that makes the whole equation a whole lot easier to work with so of course we have to do exactly the same thing with the right side of the equation we're going to divide that by the cosine 21.794t multiplied times e to the minus 5t. So now that we've done that, let's see what that equation looks like. The left will still look like 0 is equal to, this becomes minus 60 plus 13.765. This becomes the tangent of 21.794t. Of course, e to the minus 5t drops out. And then over here we have plus this becomes the tangent of so minus 261.528 times the tangent of 21.794t and here the cosine again divided by cosine becomes 1 and we end up minus 60 like this so here we have a minus 60 and a minus 60 that's minus 120 we can move that to the other side so that means that we have minus 120 oh that becomes a plus 120 on this side so plus 120 is equal to I have a 13.765 and a minus this so let's combine the two on the right side so we have a 261.528 that's probably overkill on the decimal places that's a minus plus uh, we have 13.765 and so we end up with a minus 247 0.763 times a tangent of 21.794t. Well, now we of course divide both sides by the negative 247. So we take that 1 over x times 120. And so now we end up with, um, let's see here, divide both sides by that. We end up at minus 0 0.484 is equal to the tangent of 21.794t and of course at this point we take the inverse tangent so we can then say that the inverse tangent the um, all right take the inverse tangent so the inverse tangent of 21.794t is equal to minus 0 0.484 which then tells us that 21.7 Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. That's very funky. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you. Okay, so now we're taking the inverse tangent of that. So we can say that the inverse tangent of minus 0 0.484 is equal to the angle of 21.794t. Or we can say that t is equal to the inverse tangent. And of course, we want to take the absolute value of that. In case we get a negative value, all divided by 21.794. All right, let's see what that's equal to. So we end up with 0.484 negative, take the inverse tangent, 
we get a minus, so this is equal to a minus, take up the value, 0 0.4508, 4508, divided by 21.794. So, divide by 21.794, and that gives us a 0 0.02068 seconds. Of course, if you then convert that, that's equal to 20.68 milliseconds. And that's an interesting application of this particular circuit. It is a circuit to activate the switch in an airbag system. So what happens is, at time equals zero, collision happens, the switch goes to the other side. When that happens, you make contact and you watch the voltage across the resistor rise to maximum value. It reaches a maximum value in about 21 thousandths of a second, 20 milliseconds, where the airbag gets activated. In that small amount of time, you will not have moved very much. You will be protected from hitting the steering wheel or the dashboard by the airbag inflating and protecting you from hitting something hard. And that is how the circuit works. And that's how we find the value of the time required for the airbag to get inflated. And that is how it's done. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, I did kind of mess up on the inverse tangent angle. <laughs> and thank you that I, thank you that I have a, a mathematician wife that can help me with uh, those types of details.